this is the kind of a talk that we approach prayerfully because it is not my purpose or desire that it shall develop into a political discussion. I do not believe that we should use an occasion of this kind uh, to either defend or condemn a person in public life. What we really want to try to do, if we possibly can, is to distinguish the person himself, separate him to a degree from his public office, and try to understand him a little bit as a human being. Of course, this is difficult where any person uh, becomes so intimately involved in political situations. In politics, there is a great deal of hysteria and a tremendous amount of pressure. And partisanships always run high. At the same time, somewhere under the surface of all this confusion is a human being who has what may well be described as the most difficult job on earth. That any human being shall be fully adequate to such a job particularly under existing conditions, can hardly be expected. Actually, in this country, we have never prepared people for this type of responsibility. We hope that a reasonable degree of public experience will fit them for leadership. I have always held, and will continue to do so, that the education of the American people should fit more persons for leadership, and that when it becomes obvious that an individual is going to make a political or <coughs> diplomatic career, that he should have a great deal of special training. This is not available, so we cannot expect that which we have not provided for. The second point that I believe we all have to face and recognize in this country that by the very structure of our national government it can hardly be assumed that any individual uh, can assume power beyond a certain point without the cry of dictatorship arising. It is almost impossible for anyone to please everyone. And if he succeeded in doing so, he certainly wouldn't please himself. All these elements and situations bear upon all high public office. And of course, the presidency is the highest of these offices. The next point we have to bear in mind is that for the last 50 years, this country and most of the civilized world has been drifting toward a very critical situation. Every day, all causes produce their effects. It is unfair and unreasonable to assume that situations begin and end even in the lifetime of a human being. But the situations such as those uh, now prevailing in this country certainly do not begin and end within any administration of public office. We are now living out conditions that began even before the Revolutionary War. We are certainly confronted today with problems that were left unsolved by the Civil War. All these different old streams of condition have a tendency to flow along, sometimes running parallel with each other, 
occasionally crisscrossing and creating crisis. Also, within the last 15 or 20 years particularly, the American people have lost much of their ability to face crisis. The development of thermonuclear fission has confused, disturbed, and deeply troubled the peoples of the world's principal nations. We are no longer able to approach the problems of government with a reasonable degree of personal integration. We are neurotic. And nearly all neurotic peoples become increasingly suspicious. Uh, they are quick to condemn and slow to praise anything. And yet in the emergencies which arise, their united support can hardly be expected. Thus we have a time in which problems are heaping up very rapidly. And the public ability to digest or accept problems grows less every day. We also have pressures from outside of our own way of life. The continually uh, boring and difficult international phase of things with communistic and socialized states uh, determined to overthrow the surviving democratic institutions. Into such a position as this, nearly anyone would find himself uh, rather reluctant to take on these responsibilities. Therefore, one of the first things we have to find in leadership is an individual who is not reluctant. Time after time, we know that public office has come to those who were perhaps not especially well fitted for it, simply because those better fitted refused to accept it. Today, uh, we feel uh, that public office is practically a condemnation, that we will lose our friends, multiply our enemies, ruin our reputations, and probably shorten our lives. Only certain types of individuals, therefore, can be expected uh, to have any interest in such liabilities. They must either be extremely dedicated, or they must have a kind of optimism which stands for a measure of unknowing. They cannot fully face the facts and at the same time maintain very much optimism or confidence. In recent elections, we have produced a variety of leaders. Some have been reasonably strong, some have not been so able, but they have all shared together both applause and criticism. And uh, now, uh, fate, this mysterious force that operates in a million ways to influence our destinies, has turned the administration of our affairs into the keeping of John Kennedy. Just what this means, uh, perhaps only a very few philosophically inclined persons can estimate. We will know much more about it when history unfolds the pattern, after the various personalities have ceased to dominate the public scene. So we want to begin by attempting to understand a little bit the basic temperament of President Kennedy. According to the best reports that we are able to secure, he was born at Brookline, Massachusetts, on May 29th, 1917, at 3 p.m. Other hours are given, but this apparently is the hour that is sustained by the family records. Uh, this tells us something about our man uh, from a natal chart erected for the time of birth. 
Now, as I've always pointed out, among the many things we have neglected is this study of the effect of the planets upon human beings. Whereas we have advanced other subjects with surprising progressiveness, we have left this area almost totally neglected, except for a few sincere individuals who have done the best they could with practically no support and a great deal of criticism. Therefore, we cannot say that the subject itself has been brought to the highest possible scientific perfection. We realize that we are using interpretations that were devised and given to the world nearly 5,000 years ago. For the most part, these interpretations appear to be effective, but we do not advance them dogmatically. We only advance them suggestively, in the sense that we hope they will add something to our general understanding of the subject. We learn, therefore, from the chart of Mr. Kennedy that he has his son, or the luminary, in the early degrees of Gemini. Now, what does Gemini tell us about the personality and characteristics of Mr. Kennedy? Of course, he is one of a vast family, inasmuch as all the world is full of people born under the sign of Gemini. There are countless individuals in numerous walks of life, some famous, some unknown, who have this particular sun position. Consequently, it can only be indicative. On the other hand, the average Gemini is not challenged as he has been. He is not required to plumb the very depths of his resources uh, and to apply every phase of his thinking to some urgent problem. Therefore, under pressure, uh, the Gemini may react somewhat differently from the normal expectancies. First of all, we know that this is largely or dominantly a nervous intellectual sign. It means that our man was born uh, with what we might term a mental temperament. He was born to work out certain problems by the use of mental faculties. Now, the one advantage of Gemini is its tremendous power uh, to explore details. The disadvantage is that it is likely to become drowned in detail. The individual will perhaps make too much of small matters and overlook greater things. Also, there will be a continuing tendency to analysis. Uh, there will be uh, as much thoughtfulness and ingenuity as the planet Mercury normally bestows. But in general, the Gemini individual has difficulties with what you might term the higher aspects of mentation. He has difficulty in being a philosopher. He has difficulty in maintaining a concept of great universal principles operating in the world. Now, we do not know to what degree Mr. Kennedy may have, through his personal efforts, improved his horizons in these respects. But we are always aware of the basic danger of Gemini losing sight of the great trends of things, the great patterns of life, losing sight of the long-range operations of such laws as cause and effect. We do not know with certainty, for example, uh, to what degree Mr. Kennedy is philosophically inclined. We do not know to what degree he has enlarged his perspective from what might be termed the intellectual pursuits of the average man into the contemplative pursuits of those who are really well qualified uh, for leadership in a confused world. 
If we want to ask ourselves a simple question, it may not be amiss. Considering the state of society, considering the state of education at the time that President Kennedy was educated, considering the type of education that the average person receives today under the name of higher education, what would be the probabilities of Mr. Kennedy or anybody else coming out of this system with a deep and abiding philosophic insight? I think we can say the probabilities are extremely small. Therefore, whatever philosophy or insight a man has must usually be developed by himself from his own experiences in life. <laughs> experiences in life also are subject to numerous modifications. The greatest modification in the case of Mr. Kennedy appears to have been his own family. This modification took the form of having been raised in a comparative economic security, having been raised with a high sense of the value of wealth, the value of social position. Here we have a man to whom many of the common emergencies of his own people could only be known or understood by philosophic insight. He did not share them. But this does not necessarily mean that he could not understand them. But it does mean that in order to understand them, he would have to try. He would have to work very definitely uh, to become better acquainted uh, with the conditions of the great body of people uh, with whom he is associated. Mercury as ruler of the chart does not naturally imply this. Ruler of the sun sign, pardon me does not naturally imply this. It implies, rather, the gradual building up of personal attitudes on these things, in which personal conditioning plays a very large part in the dimensions of temperament. It therefore would be natural to assume, from the position here indicated, uh, that he would build a more or less per personal point of view largely upon personal experience. This has certain limitations, but of course we must not forget that this is not all of the chart. Therefore, uh, we can only say uh, that this tendency would be, to briefly summarize the Gemini-Mercury situation, the tendency would be uh, to assume uh, that he has an intellectual approach toward life, that this approach is somewhat... Uh, critical and analytical, somewhat suspicious, and to a measure limited. That furthermore, uh, his thinking would be uh, based largely upon his own experience, which is true of all of us, but in his case, this personal experience becomes a factor in national existence rather than a merely a factor in personal existence which is so often otherwise the case. According to the ascending sign, which is Libra, Mr. Kennedy has the characteristics and attributes which undoubtedly endeared him to a considerable part of the public and contributed to his election. In other words, Libra bestows upon a person a certain magnetic radiance, a certain personality of charm, uh, of forthrightness, and to a measure of perpetual youth. The individual uh, gives the strong impression of being uh, like other people, uh, pleasant, affable, um, sy sympathetic, and attractive. All of these elements have certainly contributed a great deal to Mr. Kennedy's position, and they also sustained him rather powerfully through the opening months or year of his uh, presidency. Uh, this personal charm problem, however, in the case of Liber, has other factors related to it. Uh, research in the general theory of uh, character analysis and comparison with other charts 
shows that Libra has locked inside of it very powerful personal ambitions. Uh, these ambitions are not necessarily selfish. They are not necessarily evil. But they certainly represent a powerful drive of libido. They represent a continuing determination to rise in the world. And by um, the nature of the sign itself, which though artistic is strangely political, this sign very often drives individuals into public office. Uh, they have many of the qualifications and aspects uh, which make for a successful public person. One of the things which they bestow is a natural sense of personal rightness. The individual under Libra is quite convinced by some power within his own nature that he has a point of view that is important. Uh, we can find, for instance, strong Libra characteristics diversified between individuals as completely different as Adolf Hitler and Mohandas Gandhi. Therefore, we cannot literally say uh, that the Libra drive leads inevitably uh, to the dictatorial attitudes of Hitler, for we find this same dictatorial drive, so-called, leading to the dynamic humility of Gandhi. But between both of these men, they had was one point of common uh, agreement, namely that both felt profoundly that there was a job to be done. Each did it in his own way. One is remembered with extraordinary bitterness and the other uh, with a great deal of compassion and respect. But uh, behind the Libra person is this sense, almost always, of some kind of a separate destiny. The Libra individual is not really willing to settle down into the common mold of things and be just one with other people. He feels that his own points of view are unusually valuable. He is willing, willing quickly to defend the principles or concepts which he holds to be useful or proper. Yet in this Liber individual there is also a conflict which we find in most leadership, a conflict between uh, a desire to accomplish a great good and the tremendous pressures which arise from the constant blocking or obstructing of personal ambition. Uh, nearly all Liber individuals have a long, hard fight of it, whichever way it goes. And in this fight, they develop very often uh, a tendency to greater and greater defense of these uh, pressures or convictions which they themselves hold. I would say, therefore, that uh, in a political situation, uh, a Libra person is apt to be acceptable from the standpoint of personality, uh, but it will have always be difficult to determine the full pressure of the drive behind them. It is hard to know which direction they will turn, uh, whether they will become disillusioned and embittered, and therefore turn their drive into a negative channel, or whether they will remain optimistic or creative to the end and use this drive uh, as Gandhi did for the emancipation of his people. Uh, this uh, parallel is of interest also because it involves uh, the sense, very largely, the sense of justice. Liber representing a sign of justice the individual has a strong concept of what justice is. But this sense of justice can be, and often is, highly colored or conditioned uh, by personal tastes. Uh, Libra being a combination of justice and emotion, uh, we have a somewhat conflicting or contradictory state of affairs. Usually we think of justice blindfolded holding the scales in balance. Unfortunately, the Libra person is not blindfolded. He is not only placed in a position where justice is important, but he is also moved by personal considerations. He is moved by feelings. He is moved by emotions. 
Therefore, out of these emotions and feelings, his code of justice will largely be molded. And this molding will result in a more personal sense of executive leadership than you find in some other signs. There is a strong ambition drive in our man. Uh, this ambition drive was present or he would never have achieved the presidency. This ambition drive continues, and I suspect that it will take the form in his administration of a very dedicated determination to do those things which he believes to be necessary, things which to his understanding a combination of criticism and sentimentalism he feels to be most necessary. I don't think we have any right to assume in him any more than in anyone else that he is going to be entirely separate from himself. He is not suddenly going to be someone else. He is not going to be submerged in ideas and attitudes which are foreign to his own nature. Therefore, we might say that he is, as a person tossed into the ocean, he is determined to swim ashore according to his own convictions. He is going, not going to allow himself to be drowned in an ocean of other people's opinions. Uh, this uh, is part of the Liber temperament. It is its strength, and if this strength becomes unreasonable, it is its stubbornness. But in any event, it represents tenacity to hold on, to continue, to go on, uh, regardless of outside interference so far as this is possible to accomplish. I think, therefore, we now have the combination of Gemini and Libra. We have the uh, pattern forming around uh, a chemistry of Mercury and Venus. We have the Mercury attitude, which very likely will become too involved in red tape. And we have the uh, Venus attitude, which has a tendency to break through with enthusiasm rather than with judgment. Uh, these are the natural uh, attitudes of the person. If thwarted, if restricted, if bound, if subjected to unusual pressure of, of domination, uh, the Mercury might give in, but the Libra will rebel. The Venus will rebel. Therefore, uh, we are reasonably sure that as long as uh, he remains in office, uh, he will lead according primarily uh, to his own attitudes. Now, what does this mean in terms of uh, his political association with those around him? Actually, in this country, by the very nature of it, it is very difficult for any individual uh, to control any situation by his own means alone. We are so arranged uh, that uh, counsel, support, contradiction, confusion, all of these forces move in upon almost any individual in public office. Uh, Mr. Kennedy's Gemini situation, his uh, planet Mercury and his sun, both of these warn that he can be intellectually confused, uh, that uh, the pressure of many different opinions moving in upon him uh, will, in certain instances, confuse his own judgment. One of the reasons for this is that his judgment and the judgment of others are on the same level. If uh, Mr. Kennedy had an all-embracing philosophic insight which could absorb into itself the intellectual specializations of other people, coordinate them and unite them uh, as instruments of some one purpose, uh, he might be in a little safer situation. 
As it is, I would judge from his chart that he will be over-influenced, uh, that uh, it will be possible to find ways of reaching him, perhaps almost without his own knowledge, uh, that those who are really astute, those who are very clever, can influence him. They can influence him by playing upon his strength and his weakness. This is not unique. I suppose we haven't had a president in a hundred years who couldn't have been influenced by someone. The difficulty is now that as never before, influence is pouring in on him. Influence of every conceivable kind, much of it irreconcilable with parts of itself. This uh, pressure will represent an endless mass of conflicts. And in this uh, very conflicting situation, uh, we need a tremendous orientation in leadership. We need it, but we have never provided for it. We have never recognized it, and we have never uh, been very greatly influenced by it, so that uh, we can't expect the impossible. We can't expect things uh, to be better than we have made it possible for them to be. The next point that I think is of uh, great interest in connection with uh, Mr. Kennedy's chart is the fatalistic position of, ne of Neptune. This fatalistic position will have a considerable bearing upon his entire life and almost everything uh, that he does. Neptune is found conjuncted to Saturn in the tenth house. This is a very difficult position. I would say that it is about the most difficult that a person in public life can have. In the first place, Saturn in the tenth house has been consistently unfortunate in the lives of public persons. Uh, this Saturn uh, leads to a gradual but inevitable reversal of attitudes about this person. Their public standing, their honor, their dignity, uh, their ability uh, gradually uh, becomes undermined <coughs> by popular opposition. Saturn, therefore, has often been said uh, to lead to an inevitable fall. Uh, this, however, I do not find to be consistently true. I think it leads very definitely to an inevitable uh, crisis, a, a tremendously forceful situation. Now, in terms of the presidency of the United States, we have a somewhat different situation from that of hereditary rulers or those who are appointed to li for life or dictators that usurp public office. In a constitutional system such as ours, uh, the presidency can at the present time only extend for eight years. Under such conditions, this long cycle of Saturn in the tenth may not come into operation during the period of the presidency. It does, however, warn Mr. Kennedy uh, that uh, there is always a powerful opposing faction, that this Saturn in the tenth will never really give him undivided allegiance. It will never overcome the tendency of Saturn, which is crit critical, to affect his position. It will also, in many instances, place a certain subconscious sense of insecurity in him. It will cause him to be somewhat deficient internally in the attitudes necessary to back up his uh, ambitions or his dedications. There is within every person who has Saturn in the tenth house, a core of psychic weakness. Uh, this core uh, simply lacks uh, the power to support the person in the very gravest of emergencies. Wherever Saturn is so placed, the danger of psychological depression is marked. Uh, the danger of the individual finally giving up is indicated and the sense of a fatality associated with things uh, also 
uh, becomes somewhat important. Strangely enough, we often find a hint of superstition in this kind of mind, in this kind of person. The conjunction of Neptune to this Saturn does not help particularly. It places another impairment upon psychic judgment. It causes the person uh, to develop uh, what might be termed some types of internal delusions. Uh, these delusions are not uncommon in public uh, persons. Sometimes we have the delusion of grandeur. Sometimes we have the delusion of infallibility. At other times, the delusion of absolute rightness of our own attitudes. But some way, whatever it contributes, Neptune comes in as a disorienter of basic judgment. It means that things moving along come to points of decision, and at the very critical moment, this decision fails of action. The decision in a crisis is sometimes fatalistically bad. It means that the person uh, brings a condition almost to its maturity and then loses in some way control or orientation in the matter. I think perhaps that uh, this particular Neptune-Saturn conjunction, which has a tendency to erode away uh, the uh, achievements of great people uh, can be found in uh, some of the policies which have been associated with the Kennedy administration. Uh, policies uh, that seem to move rather well, seem to be comparatively pleasing, uh, seem to be getting somewhere, and all of a sudden they sort of slowly fade out. Uh, there seems to be the lack of follow-up, uh, the lack of that one final decision in the right direction that might lead to greatness. This weakness, of course, may not rest entirely upon Mr. Kennedy. It may rest upon other factors over which he has no control. He may not always be able to make the judgments which he might like to make. But the uh, entire pattern of public office under such conditions is that whether it is his own responsibility or someone else's responsibility, in an administration dominated by a Neptune-Saturn conjunction in the tenth house, uh, there will be difficulty in bringing anything to a good termination. We will get things partly developed. We will see the deck directions in which they seem to want to go. And then at the last moment, when that final ounce of solution might be so valuable, that precious ounce is not available. Then the conditions drag. Then they slowly uh, disintegrate of themselves. In other words, there are moments, there are times in the affairs of men. And these times have to be grasped in some way, because if they are not grasped, they may never return. And it is in this problem of grasping vital moments uh, that this particular aspect is especially unfortunate. In those moments, the president may come under wrong advice or he may find some opposition rising against him that appears insurmountable. But uh, the, uh, the general situation uh, threatens a non-eventuality, a condition going along, drifting, drifting, almost achieving something of unusual distinction and somewhat falling short. Uh, this, uh, however, is hardly something that is unique to the presidency. This is a description of the life of the average person in this country today. Everything seems to fall apart at the critical moment. Careers, lives, homes, families. In all things there is this uh, lack of completeness, lack of the power to bring things to their final 
fulfillment. Now, I would suspect from Mr. Kennedy's chart that uh, the popular opinion that he is having some family difficulties uh, is well taken. Uh, the family situation in connection with Mr. Kennedy does not seem helpful. There is just too much family. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, the problem, however, is not quite as simple as it might seem to be. This problem is very deeply set psychologically. It is part of the natural inherited characteristic of the president himself. He was born into this kind of a pattern. He has lived in it. He has been dominated by it. And he has inevitably become deeply involved in all the parts of it. Uh, this situation would cause me to suspect, however, uh, that instead of this family being composed of persons who are now primarily concerned in advancing the cause of the president, that various members of the family are also more or less rugged individualists on their own. Uh, there will be a tendency to use the president not merely as uh, might could be considered entirely proper, but that these various members of the family may use him merely as stepping stones for their own purposes. There does not seem to be a truly sincere family integration around the man. Uh, this is somewhat a pity, because under conditions such as he faces, the strength of a well-integrated, a well-balanced family would be of great value to him. Instead of that, he is more or less subject uh, to the ulterior motives of his own family. It is very possible that he does not realize this. If he does, it is possible that the situation has become so involved that it is more than he can solve in his own way. But I think one of the greatest difficulties that he will face during his administration is the pressure of those people whose pressures are the most difficult to deny. It is very difficult to deny the natural ambitions of your own flesh and blood. And where you have been brought up in this kind of a pattern, it is very, very difficult uh, to rise completely and entirely above it. It is also quite possible that this mercury of the president, which is his critical and analytical faculty, has been fairly well indoctrinated by these relatives, that they have rationalized their positions to him, uh, so completely that he is no longer able to question his own feelings about this matter. But he is certainly apparently caught in a web of uh, relational factors. Uh, these are not really, in my estimation, working for him. Uh, they are not standing firmly behind him to help him do his job. There is uh, too much uh, individualism, uh, too much personal ambition in most of the members of the family. As far as the family situation is concerned, I also suspect that Mr. Kennedy will have uh, considerable domestic difficulty. I'm not at all convinced from his chart uh, that he is uh, going to gain too much support in his own home. Uh, I think the problem may well lie in Mr. Kennedy's own attitudes. Uh, we have an individual here who is, in his own way, pretty dominating. And in this sense of domination and intensity and ambition and responsibility, the domestic situation may be somewhat out of line. It would not be entirely fair to say uh, that if this domestic situation uh, continues to be troublesome, that it is 
his wife's fault. It is quite possible that his own temperament has much to do with it, inasmuch as the Libra personality, with its strange pressures and drives, cannot be re always regarded as the ideal marriage partner. So I think that we do have, however, a weakness here in which there is lack of solid support, solid understanding, and solid protection from home and family. Things move on the surfaces in conformity with prevailing policies, but under the surfaces uh, things are not uh, of a kind which will give the president uh, a solid psychological background. The background is uh, confused. Now also, uh, the election was largely influenced by the president's religious affiliation. Politically, we don't want to discuss a religious situation, but if we are students uh, of human beings and human nature, we can hardly eliminate this factor. I don't feel that we have any right to criticize the president for his religious allegiances, and I do think that there was a marked gain in the last election in the matters of prejudice. But uh, what we are perhaps primarily interested in will be two things. First, what effect has religion had upon the president as a human being? To what degree has this been a source of strength to him? Uh, to what degree, we'll say, is he truly devout? From his chart, I would not gather him to be an exceptionally devout man. I do not think that uh, his religion, as a living faith in his own nature, uh, will be particularly prominent. I think it will be nominal. I do not believe that uh, his uh, convictions of a religious nature are strong enough to uh, modify to any great degree his other policies. In all possibility, we must consider him as we must consider most people, uh, religious in a nominal sense of the word. That he might defend religion, that he might uh, regularly attend religious service, uh, that he might uh, fulfill the formalities of religion, we can assume. Uh, but that this religion uh, would dig deeply into him and become a tremendous force, I doubt at this time, although there is much that may uh, play upon his religious factors in later life. I think these things belong to the future. He is still in that uh, stage of his own development in which he is depending largely upon himself rather than upon a spiritual uh, institution and leadership. There is, however, in Mr. Kennedy a certain um, combination of religious political uh, insight. I think that he will uh, consistently uh, keep in mind uh, the various religious factors of the people. I don't think he is going to become a defender of, in himself of atheism or anything of that nature. I just don't believe that religion is going to become a great factor in, in his personal consciousness. I think it's a conformist attitude. It is the acceptance of what always has been accepted. But I suspect strongly that in emergency, if it arises, uh, Mr. Kennedy will follow his own inclinations rather than be dominated by any church. I don't think that is his major problem. I think we should bear in mind another point that seems to be rather interesting, and that is the comparison of the horoscope of Kennedy with the basic chart of the United States. I don't suppose that there has been one president in the last 20 whose chart has been so tremendously involved in the basic figure of the nation. 
Uh, we cannot compare the two charts and impose one upon the other in the old technique of doing these things without realizing that the charts are bound together by tremendous bonds of planetary strength and aspect. There is uh, a tremendous uh, relationship between the two charts, uh, more than perhaps would normally be expected or could reasonably be hoped for. These relationships, as is always the case in astrology, are both good and bad. It would be in incorrect to say that uh, the chart of Kennedy is an unlimited uh, blessing nor a complete curse. It is a combination of factors out of which we get almost something of the oriental concept of there being a destiny in all of this. Uh, this man's relationship to the pattern of the country is highly karmic. It is tremendously consistent with the general trend of our own living and thinking. It was almost certain, therefore, that for woe or weal, uh, President Kennedy will have a very powerful and lasting effect upon our national life. Uh, that uh, in his administration will arise some of the most complicated situations in the modern history of our nation that never before has a president perhaps really been in such a complicated spot. That uh, in, in the past we have had some very able leaders, and we have had some that were far from able. But we also have never had before precisely the situation in which the Kennedy administration finds itself. Even under the preceding administration, uh, only a few years removed, there was far less tension than there is at the present moment. Uh, it is also uh, useless to say that this tension is due to Kennedy or his advisors. This tension is due uh, to the gradual forming of a pattern, a pattern which has been building for years, a pattern in which the mass of unfinished business is almost inconceivable, and also a pattern in which world affairs and world conditions grow more complicated every day. It is, it is not a nice pattern. It is, it is not an easy situation at best. And a great deal will depend on how solutions are made. Uh, these solutions could affect every phase of our continuance. They also could present further and inconceivable difficulties to a future president. It is a very, very heavily burdened administration. And it is an administration in which there is a great psychological burden hanging not, over, not only over the people of this country, but the people of almost all nations. The world is moving relentlessly into a crisis. And uh, under this condition, uh, it is obvious that adequate leadership is practically impossible. Uh, we look around among other nations, and unless we wish to assume the virtue of absolute despotism, there is scarcely a leader whose position is even reasonably secure. I think the chart of the United States, uh, mingled with the chart of Kennedy, and the interpretations balanced to the best of our ability, this balancing can go on for a long time as far as research is concerned. I would think that snap judgment on it would be more or less to the effect that there will be a tendency in all of these adjustments, a tendency uh, to avoid or evade uh, what might be termed uh, final decisions. There is this tendency to put off things, and there comes a time when you simply cannot put things off any longer. 
Whether this will break over the Kennedy administration, we are not sure, but I have a feeling that the general critical situation will worsen unless something very definitely important, constructive, realistic is done. Uh, we, are, we are not adequately uh, presenting the American place in world affairs today. It's hard to say who could adequately present these facts. Various parties have their contending candidates. But the fact remains uh, that we are moving with such a vast involved machine, a machine involving practically every phase of human life today. And we are so tied together in an economic situation, which is itself highly critical, that no one knows what to do or what the results of their own actions will finally be. I think that uh, perhaps one of the byproducts of this administration might be to throw back to the people a realization of the increasing need for individual judgment, uh, that we have gradually become too dependent upon an administration which is forced to arbitrate too many of our own selfish purposes, <laughs> that we are no longer to be considered as one people. We are to be considered now as a vast program of private enterprises, hundreds of different specializations, each determined to survive, and each turning to the government uh, to guarantee its survival. Thus, everything is depending upon the government for its own continuance, and instead of giving a strength to government, it is drawing strength from government all the time. It is like a group of spoiled children impoverishing their parents. And in this situation, uh, the politician is at loss. For no matter what he would do, if what he does is really right, he will probably be forced out of office. The, uh, the, the honest politician today is not only a rarity, but would, if he exists, be well on the way to martyrdom. It is, a, it is a very difficult and ticklish situation. Now, the next point I'd like to bring out in connection with this is the problem of Mr. Kennedy's health. And here I think we have perhaps a, a situation that is a little more uh, important or more uh, to be considered than uh, we have given attention to it. In my opinion, Mr. Kennedy is not a very healthy man physically. We hear occasionally of uh, difficulties in his health. I suspect that these difficulties are rather real and uh, perhaps will present uh, a, a more or less definite situation. Uh, actually also, where we have a person who has uh, an obscure health problem, we have an individual whose psychology is bound to be somewhat affected by this. Uh, the uh, psychological effect can, of course, take several forms. Uh, we know what happened under the Roosevelt administration, where we had a man with very critical health conditions. We have, however, always the realization that uh, the failure of the body to support consciousness uh, can result in certain psychological tendencies developing which are not of the best. Uh, the person may rise against these with all the available courage and strength that he possesses. But unless again he is extremely wise and most enlightened, uh, pain does hurt, and it hurts the mind. It hurts all types of decision. I think the president's health may be a further concern uh, as his administration proceeds. And uh, there is some evidence that whatever the condition is, 
uh, which apparently arose from a spinal injury, it is not corrected. It is not uh, solved. And it is in an area where difficulty is not uh, easy to reach or understand. So I would say that the president has certain dangers uh, surrounding his administration, physical dangers. These dangers include his health, and where you have Saturn in the 10th house, conjunct a planet like Neptune, you always have at least the remote danger of assassination. You have danger to life, you have danger to health, you have danger to public office in a great many ways. So the president's uh, physical condition would, I think, uh, justify a considerable amount of thoughtfulness and care. The next phase of his administrative policy that we might consider for a moment is the international policy. Uh, the comparison of uh, Kennedy's charts chart with those of some of the principal leaders of other national patterns, men like Mao and Khrushchev, indicate to a measure uh, that uh, these other leaders have found, or at least pretty firmly believe they have found, certain basic weaknesses in Kennedy's um, armament. Uh, the tendency is for outside leaders uh, to attempt to dominate him and to uh, work very hard on this problem, uh, not only directly but insidiously. Uh, the, uh, the recognition that uh, Kennedy has certain complexes, shall we say, or fixations of attitudes, uh, gradually understood by foreign leaders, most of whom have a whole group of psychologists to help them interpret international situations, uh, would cause us to assume that these leaders are convinced that Mr. Kennedy is exploitable, that it is possible to use him, that it is possible to get from him things uh, which they want. Now, this does not mean by any sense of the word uh, that uh, Mr. Kennedy is not loyal or is not dedicated uh, to the good of his country. It is simply that his temperament seems to offer possibilities. And I think we are able to understand this in his attitudes uh, toward supporting various governments in various parts of the world under situations that have been focused as recently as the Vietnam situation, in which the charming Madame New plays such a prominent part. Uh, one would think that uh, we would gradually be undeceived about these things, uh, that the obvious fact uh, that most of these projects are not going well uh, would in some way uh, seep into the executive parts of government. <coughs> Actually, however, uh, we are working on a policy, and unfortunately we are not uh, able to be keenly aware of the failure of this policy. We continue to struggle with it. We continue to support it and back it up. And I suspect strongly that uh, some of the most difficult situations the President has to face involve these policy decisions in which he will be forced, in many instances, against his normal inclinations uh, to follow procedures. And the second possibility is that a great deal of important information will be kept from him. This Neptune again suggests that he will be the victim of secrecies, uh, that there will be too much done that he will not even know about and that he will gradually find, if he is not careful, uh, that people whom he highly depends upon, whom he regards with the greatest confidence, he may discover uh, that they are working desperately against him. Another phase of his uh, personality 
which I think has to be greatly considered, is his inability to make the wisest use of his own status as a leader of the country. Mr. Kennedy has not been able to maintain the, uh, the front or the appearance which put him into office. He has not been able to demonstrate uh, the rugged American determination to get things done, uh, which many people associated with him. And whether this really means his own weakness or simply the almost irresistible strength of obstacles is again difficult to determine. But there is a definite indication of the fact that he has failed in certain personal uh, relationships with the public. One thing which it seems to me is indicative of this, you see with Saturn and Neptune in the tenth house, the tenth house becomes public standing. It becomes the, the symbol of the uh, impression made by leadership upon people. Here, I think, he got into serious trouble with his press. Uh, he has uh, allowed public relations to boomerang. He has overplayed or permitted to be overplayed uh, his own personality as a news factor. You know, there has been too much uh, unnecessary publicity about the man and his family. Uh, this, uh, while it may be to a measure gratifying to almost any ego, it is still unadvisable in terms of public office. He has tarnished public, uh, his public image uh, by over-polishing it. It has been to become too much uh, personality injected into a public situation. It has boomeranged as Saturn always does in the tenth house, and instead of adding to his popularity, has detracted from it. Though the uh, future lying ahead for Mr. Kennedy in the next year or two is, of course, of interest to nearly everyone, uh, I would feel that. Uh, he is by no means out of the woods, that uh, as far as his general public condition goes, uh, he is still to face, even before the next election, uh, some of the most difficult phases of his administration. I think that uh, the spring of 1964 is going to be very complicated for President Kennedy. I think during that time, both internal and international affairs will take a rather bad turn, that he will be confronted with more decisions and be less able to make them because he has not laid a firm foundation of previous decisions. I think there is this tendency to neglect, uh, perhaps from conviction, but certainly still to neglect, this measure of decision which has marked his administration. And as he comes into 1964, he is going to be heavily deluged with unfinished business. Obviously, part of this may be contrived. It may develop for around a rising political situation in election year. But regardless of how it comes about, he has it in his lap. And uh, in the spring, I think his international relations will become more complicated. I think his domestic and family situation will become more difficult. I think his internal relationships with the problems that have been drifting within the country itself will become more pronounced. I think he will be required to take some positive stands on financial matters and perhaps on labor organization matters. He is going to be forced, if it can be done, to make a series of very definite decisions and commitments. 
Well, obviously, this is the most dangerous thing that any pol politician has to face, <laughs> because no matter how he decides them, he's going to hurt. And the uh, principle of policy, the politician always hurts himself. Uh, consequently, uh, the, the situation climbs in the early spring, by March or April, seems to reach a crescendo. And in this, he is going to be beset on every side, and it is not at all unlikely that he may also have further health complications. So the spring does not look cheerful for him, according to the way I read it. Everyone has the right to read it their own way, however. There is much to uh, suggest that uh, such a crisis could arise as the pile of unfinished business seems to be mounting constantly. But in, uh, in the spring, uh, the world tensions seem to pick up a little again. There are new decisions that have to be made between leaders. And of course, our fortunes with foreign politicians have always been low. Uh, we have nearly always failed in everything except the right to pay the bill. And uh, whether we can do it differently this time is a question. Uh, Mr. Kennedy is probably being watched internationally more than any other man in history. He is watched more successfully because of the fact that we do have a comparatively free press and a free access to nearly all of our political information. But everything everywhere is moving into a watchful relationship of the Kennedy policies. Uh, they want to really know uh, what we really intend to do. And we just can only hope that Mr. Kennedy knows. We are not sure that he does. We're not sure that anyone else would know either in his position. But something has to be done that sets a directive. The American people themselves are drifting in all directions. Uh, crime is increasing. Suicide is increasing. Drug addiction is increasing. And more people are taking sleeping pills than ever before in history. Uh, many people seem to want to sleep through the present administration. <laughs> <laughs> this, however, is a little bit optimistic because they have no idea what they will wake up to, even if they succeed in doing this. But uh, one definite situation stands out, uh, namely that uh, also in the fall, Mr. Kennedy's planets are not too favorable. All through this coming year, it looks as though unfinished business will be thrown at him. He will have to decide some things. He will have to make decisions right or wrong. We can no longer continue without a policy. Somewhere in government, whether it be in his administration or somewhere else, a policy must be established. A policy around which American thinking can rally. A policy which clarifies what we intend to do about world affairs. What our basic attitude is toward other nations. Uh, how much abuse we will take from those whom we support. If these policies are not clarified, I think we will find that the uh, opposition to the Kennedy administration will rise rapidly through summer and early fall. If, however, some fairly secure uh, solutions are reached, even if we do not agree with all of them, if we see them, understand them, and know them to be reasonable, uh, a great deal of this present confusion will come out of both public and private life. Uh, just as children are clearly uh, influenced by their parents, and just as the spoiled, wayward child more or less bespeaks uh, family neglect, family indifference, or family feuding, so the fact that a 
that nearly 200 million Americans are in varying degrees of spoilage seems to indicate there's something wrong with the parents, something wrong with the leadership upon which the life of these people must be sustained. This thing that is wrong, however, was not invented by Kennedy. Let's not assume that it was. It was invented long before he reached this world. Uh, we have had this problem growing and increasing uh, since World War I. But at the same time, uh, we do hope, we do consider important that some of the prevalent evils be corrected. We feel the great need to see some form of strong leadership arise. We don't want it, but we must have it. And until we see this strength, we certainly will not give undivided allegiance to anyone. The very t tight and powerful relationships between Kennedy's chart and that of the United States will make him a difficult man to defeat at the polls, let's face it. There is too much tie here. There is too much very intimate uh, relationship between the two charts. He is locked very tightly into the American pattern at the moment. On the other hand, the one thing that could pry him loose will be that in this relationship or in this pattern, nothing develops, nothing materializes, nothing rationalizes. This could cause him a great political headache. But he does have the type of a chart uh, that will take a very good chart to beat. It will have to be someone who also has very deep and strong ties with the American uh, national horoscope. So that uh, he will be a formidable adversary at any election. However, the, uh, the fact that he is vacillating in his own consciousness should become more and more apparent to him. Perhaps if he can find some better advisors or some stronger personalities to assist him, it will help. He seems to be in great need of, we might almost say, philosophical counseling. He seems to be in great need of uh, gathering his own resources together to take the blind pressures of purposes and rationalize them. Unless he is able to do this, I think that uh, he's going to have more uh, than his share of difficulties. In many ways, uh, President Kennedy is under very heavy tensions from the planet Uranus. This planet is a very tricky one. It is a planet of great force, but it is a planet of great and sudden explosions and changes. It is the planet Uranus in his chart which has largely made him a president of crises. Uh, almost every minute something will be falling apart somewhere. Uh, well, there will be very little let down. The temper of crisis grows on and on. And this is one of the uh, burdens of his own personality. In his private life, whether it shows or not, there is also this pattern of crisis. Things are constantly building up and facing him with emergency decisions. Well, emergency decisions are always the most difficult to make, especially if you're not constitutionally best adapted to them. Uh, President Kennedy's thinking is not emergency thinking. He is not at his best, where decisions have to be made uh, very rapidly and under heavy pressure. The mercury liber combination wants to have time to weigh things, uh, wants to try to uh, get, get more information or more knowledge about something. But crisis always prevents this. And because Uranus affects uh, the Kennedy chart adversely, uh, crisis will not help him uh, in his career. Every crisis will add to his 
uh, unpopularity unless he is extremely careful. One thing is he will wait too long, and therefore the crisis will be larger than it should be. Another thing, under the pressure of crisis, he will use extreme action, and his action in many instances will take on almost temporary dictatorial aspects or characteristics. This in itself will be uh, a very unpopular attitude. And this crisis, which has arisen during his administration, bearing upon religion, is also a, a serious matter for him, although perhaps he does not appear to be directly involved in it. It is just another form of confusion, which no one has seemed to be able to take hold of and clarify. Governments all over have lost the genius for common sense. They have lost the simple contact with realities. Our government, like most others, is moving around on a cloud somewhere. There is not any reality underneath so many of these things. We do not have the ability to put two and two together and get four. What we do is put two and two together and get a dozen new bureaus to administer it. We cannot get down to the simple facts. Uh, this uh, Supreme Court decision on religion shows just exactly how unfactual we can be. How we can strangle to death on a phrase which nobody can really interpret whereas at the same time we allow vast projects to go neglected and ignored. This lack of the reasonable may be due to the fact that government is becoming too unwieldy, too heavy, and too much involved in private business. In all of these different elements, however, the man himself, Mr. Kennedy, has inherited uh, a, a cyclone. He has inherited an extremely difficult pattern. He inherited it without too many uh, basic characteristics capable of handling it wisely. We have not yet found that he was a great diplomat. We have not yet found that he was a great administrator. On the other hand, perhaps uh, many groups have never permitted him to be either. He is caught, as leaders are caught today. And he is caught under a broad pattern of Saturn in the tenth house in his own chart, which is a sad gray pattern in itself. A pattern in which there is very little happiness to him in any part of it. Uh, very little fulfillment of any great good that he might hope to achieve. Very little honest help in anything that he wants to do, and very little in intimate and immediate contact with the great people of the nation. Uh, a, a, he is separated from his truest friends, surrounded by those of unknown allegiances. Perhaps some of them are very dedicated to him, but many are not. The man is perhaps in the poorest relationship with the country as a group, of any president in recent times. The one thing that he might possibly be able to do would be to sense this and bring the whole problem directly to the people. <clears throat> but unless he is able uh, to break through uh, this pattern that is closing in on him, he is simply going to be slowly uh, broken down uh, by uh, the conflict, the crisis, the inconsistencies with which he is surrounded. I'm not sure that uh, he is going to prove to be one of the greatest presidents we ever had, or one of the worst. But it is, one, one thing is certain, none has ever inherited a more critical situation. And perhaps few have come to this situation with less experience uh, than he has. Because actually, uh, the man is in a, in a spot that calls for characteristics and qualities and insight and understanding 
which we are not producing in anyone. And uh, the, uh, the generation to which he belongs, the generation which we neglected to enlighten, is now the generation that is going to take over the nation. And we cannot expect strong, adequate leadership from an educational system that never provided it, from a religious system that never inspired it, from a political system that never supported it, or an industrial system that never wanted it. And in a face like that, who is wrong? I think in all probabilities, uh, we have here more or less an image of the kind of leadership we have prepared. If we are not satisfied with it, then I think it's up to us uh, to think seriously about building better leadership and a more intelligent, dedicated following. For no matter how great the leader, he is helpless if his followers will not support him. And no matter how earnest and sincere the following, it is helpless if the leader will not interpret its wishes. There has gradually come this tremendous interval between the leader and the follower, with vast dissatisfaction in both areas, and no real ability to get these two factors together. <coughs> Under these conditions, we find a man of reasonable abilities in a very sit a dis difficult and dangerous situation, which will probably cost him much of his own peace of mind, may seriously injure his health, and may... <coughs> Uh, may be one of the bitter experiences that human beings have to endure in this world. So altogether is a kind of a complex situation, and I think as a human being, Mr. Kennedy deserves a certain measure of our sympathy. I think as a leader, he has to prove himself. I think there are many people with bad conscience around him. I think that uh, his... His situation is one in which we can only hope that this destiny which has guarded our nation for so long knew why it put him here and what it intends him to do, and we hope that it bestows upon him the courage to do it. Ooh, time is up.